Uh, Coach, you said last week you wanted to split on the road. Um, I mean, that, that's what you got, but are you still, is there still a sense of uh, disappointment with just that two point loss at CSUN? Well, uh, in the locker room before we left, we, we talked about um, there was an opportunity to go for a sweep. We felt like we, we played well against Santa Barbara and really played well against Long Beach State. Felt like our defense was starting to turn the corner. Um, and our defense was very good for the weekend. On the first game, we didn't, we didn't earn the victory against Northridge. We turned the ball over 18 times, and that's just so uncharacteristic of us. I felt like that was a game that nice to have won, but I didn't feel like we had earned, we had earned the victory. We gave the ball away. And as a coach, you, you, you'll take every victory you can get, but it wasn't heartbreaking because we didn't earn it. We had, we had things that we... Um, did that just weren't characteristic of us. And then Northridge, or I'm mean, sorry, the Fullerton game, I felt like it was our most complete game from an offensive side, from a defensive side, and from a special team side. And special teams in basketball is out of bounds plays, uh, free throw shooting, free throw rebounding, free throw offensive rebounding. There's a lot of special teams that go into basketball. It was a term, obviously, developed by uh, football. But uh, we, we address special teams on a regular basis in practice. Um, all, the, all the idiosyncratic parts of the game from side out of bounds, underneath hoop out of bounds, press break, presses, free throws, free throw shooting, free throw rebounding. We did well in all those categories. We charted out really well. Um, the only thing that we, we didn't do well at Northridge was rebound against their 6'8", six, 6'10", six, physical, physical front line, which we think that is going to be the key segueing into this week is that I think Riverside is even more physical than, uh, if not the most physical interior team in the conference. Um, and so that's going to be a, a major challenge for us. Yeah, Coach, uh, two and three of the Big West, um, obviously not bad, a lot more games to play. Um, your opponents are beating you by just over a point a night. Um, playing, do you like the way you guys are clicking? Is it just, you know, like you said, a particular game you just – struggle in one category? Yeah, I think uh, what we're talking to our players right now about is, is the uh, most important part of any sport, any coaching and any development is, is it's not what you do, it's how consistently you do it. And um, we're, we're, when any time it comes down to a point, a last second shot, win or lose, it, it comes down to not whether your, your overall philosophy is correct, or whether your talent's good enough, it's whether we can be consistent. And if one player, there's one thing one more time, one more day, one more bit consistently. You have maybe eight or nine more plays that maybe push you over the top. With the Northridge game, I thought it was critical is that Hawaii game came down to the last minute or two. Uh, Santa Barbara came down to the last second. Long Beach State came down to the last second three different times. Uh, Northridge came down to a last second shot. We had three different opportunities to win the game. That. Our, our goal is to be 10 points better than somebody. If you're 10 points better, it doesn't come down to the last second. And so fortunately against Fullerton, we were seven or eight points better. And the game ultimately didn't come down to a last second shot. It came down to Reese Morgan making uh, 10 straight free throws and icing the game away at the free throw line. Yeah, Reese Morgan been a, been fantastic uh, in conference thus far. Talk about just how he's, uh, his performance. Well, Reese is five years in the program three knee surgeries here, uh, the best he's felt physically in two years. Um, the other nice thing about Reese is that we were able to keep his minutes down during the preseason. We played him about 20 minutes a night. Um, he wanted to play more. He felt like he could play more. We said, Reese, I've been down this road. We need to have you able to play 25 or in some nights 30 minutes and um, limit the wear and tear on his body, uh, more specifically his knees. And so we're getting that uh, on occasion, 28 to 32 minutes out of Reese. The, du the double overtime night, the other night he went over 30 minutes. Um, and then we got to limit some of his practice time. But uh, I love what he brings uh, on a nightly basis. And I think he sets the tone for our team um, in that way of competitiveness, toughness, and just guttiness every night. Um, at this point in the season, is there anything that you were kind of thinking the team would like have together by now that they're not reaching yet? Kind of what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, we, ideally by end of January, you would hope that your man-to-man -man defense 
Um, we, we concentrated in the summer and the fall on our offense. We needed the program as a whole needed to improve offensively. And we, we, we've gotten given ourselves an A in that category. We went from a, a team just averaging over 60 to averaging 75 or 76 points a night. We've increased our scoring by 15 points uh, this year. So we very pleased with making that decision in the summer, concentrating on it. What we did was lost ground on our defense. And now we're just now getting to the point where our man-to-man -man defense is solid. And eventually, we will have to put in uh, uh, some curveballs in there with some zones and some traps. Our press is OK, but we still have more to put in. You know, late January, we'd like to be able to have a couple more curveballs to our arsenal. Um, so I've been reading a lot about uh, Brian Bennett's contribution to the team with his you know, career points um, reaching 1,000 and being ranked like third in Big West. So can you just maybe touch base on that? Yeah, I was really happy. I told Brian uh, last night that uh, he's only uh, 32,000 points away from catching Kobe Bryant's 33,000 points that he has in a career. Um, and uh, if you look at that, he, he had a big so – I said, well, I said 1,000 points, uh, college basketball is excellent, but it puts in perspective of uh, what kind of – what kind of career Kobe Bryant had when he scored 30? I just saw the other night. I said, Kobe Bryant just scored his 33rd thousand point. And I'm going, wow, Bryant scored 1,000. <laughs> and so that's really an, an impressive thing by Kobe. And I also kept Bryant kind of like, yeah. In other words, congratulations, you scored 1,000. We need about another 400 more for the rest of the season. And then um, what do you know about like UCR and Davis? Uh, we know the UCR. I don't know much about Davis right now. This is historically what they run. But um, uh, UCR... Um, as I mentioned briefly, is very physical. They have a, a big, strong, physical post players, um, quickness on the, on the wings, and, uh, um, and then scoring in the bland kid. Uh, we have a shooter who has made the most three-pointers in the nation. He's got the most made, the bland kid has the most made threes and the second most attempts. So he's made four, making four a night, taking eight or uh, nine a night. So what we're going to do is, is, is be faced with a similar situation we saw when Santa Barbara came up here and Gabe Vincent was knocking down threes from all over the place. Um, that's where our, our defense is going to be challenged, where we know who's going to shoot, uh, but you still have to stop them. And so that's going to be the, the, that's the challenging part of sports and the fun part of sports and then also the part that gives you a headache is that when you can't stop them, you say, well, I know what they're going to do. We know what we have to do to try to stop them, but if you can't execute it, um, that's, that's the frustration part of it when you just can't execute what you want to do defensively. And for us to be successful um, through the month of the rest of January, but into February is, is, is having that defensive brand and identity come back and identifying shooters, getting to shooters, getting into their bubble and taking away those rhythm shots. Thank you. So uh, UC Riverside, you're going to try to get out fast or do you, do you have a, an approach that you want to take on Thursday night? Yeah, we just really got to be able to do is, is initiate game plan and sustain it. Um, offensively, we've been pretty steady. Um, and when we've been able to score 35 to 40 points a half, um, we've had some hiccups here and there. But for the most part, consistency on the offensive end, we've had some transition. We're getting inside buckets. We're getting uh, three-pointers. We're getting drives. We're getting to the free throw line. I think what our, our real goal is, my real goal is to look at the score at halftime and say, are we holding them to 35 points? You know, our, our magic number used to be 30. Um, now we're going, okay, well, the, the game is faster with the shot clock being um, shortened. So if we can hold the team to 35 points, that means we can hold them to 70 for the game. That means we're averaging 76. If we get to our average of 76 points a night, you know, we have a, we have a couple basket cushion going into the last minute, then I would feel like we, can, we have a great chance. So. Um, I think getting off a great start is, is, is always nice, but we're not, we're not obsessed with the first three minutes or five minutes as much as we are obsessed with the first 20 minute half and look at that as a, as a, as a totality of, of what, how we've done. You know, some, some teams come out and might hit, hit three or four shots and you're down 10 to four or something. Other times you might come out and be ahead 12 to two. Doesn't always dictate really the outcome of the game that much. You're almost through the conference games, you know, for the first round. Um, who impresses you the most to the other teams in the Big, big West? Well, we haven't played Irvine yet. Um, they're undefeated, and Hawaii is undefeated. We played Hawaii on their home court. Um, I was impressed with Hawaii's um, inside-outside balance. 
Uh, they, they, they score inside well, and they shot the ball outside well. Um, and they had some uh, two different guys that would post up on us. Um, Irvine, I only haven't seen them on film, still has one of the tallest lineups in America. It was 7'7", seven, 7'2", seven, seven, seven foot, three guys over seven foot on the roster. Um, and that, and, and given night, is going to be challenging for any team in America. Uh, so on, the, on those given nights, that's when you hope that uh, we're, we're like the Golden State Warriors and you're shooting 55% from the three-point line and that perimeter shooting will negate height. But you, got, you better be shooting the ball very well if you're going to knock off Irvine. So we'll see them in uh, a week from now after we finish up this road trip. Uh, following Wednesday, we'll have them, and then we'll restart the conference officially next week with the uh, Hawaii game on the following Saturday. Reflecting on the non-conference games you've played, UCLA, St. Mary's, and USC, St. Mary's is still doing really well. Yeah. Do you think that this is a team that can go uh, deep into the NCAA playoffs? Well, you're, you're missing two other ones there. Uh, uh, Texas A&M is number 10 in the nation. Um, we, uh, I think they might be bumped up. They were 10 in the nation a few days ago, and I think the latest polls, they might have been uh, bumped up another notch. We, we, having played uh, A&M and St. Mary's, um, we went against both of those and said, wow, uh, St. Mary's is even more offensively explosive than Texas A&M, who's number 10 in the nation. I thought that the uh, physicality of Texas A&M felt like a top 10 team in the nation. Their post players were so physical that they could just overwhelm you. Uh, but St. Mary's is perhaps one of the top five teams I've ever coached against when it comes to efficiency on their offensive end. Their ball movement and their shooting is uh, national, and it, and it shows statistically, but also shows with their record as their first place in the West Coast Conference. And then USC has carved out a, a nice start of the season as well in the Pac-12. So we knew that going against um, you know that talent early in the year. Um, another team that we lost to by a point is uh, uh, winning their conference right now is Texas Corpus Christi. And so we know that preseason schedule, it doesn't do a lot for – my overall career record, but I do believe it does a ton for our team's ability to identify and coaching staff to what we're going to have to do to be prepared for conference play. It just toughens you up. And I, I don't think that we, we beat Long Beach State at home without playing that preseason schedule because we're playing against players that, that have the length and the athleticism of Long Beach State. And so we get prepared and we're a little better on the boards. Um, because unless you play against long, strong, athletic, aggressive players, on a pretty regular basis, you, you, you start creating some poor habits on your block offs and your guards don't block down and have a double block off on the, on the baseline side. So a lot of those things I think are really big and, and the preseason schedule is, is critical to our advancement of our program. Okay, last question, because I know you got roots in the Northwest. Were you surprised St. Mary's beat Gonzaga? No, I'm not surprised at all because we played St. Mary's and just saw the efficiency of them and also know that uh, Gonzaga um, – has lost had lost their their big kid in the middle. Um, uh, Sabonis is there, but uh, the the other big kid is gone um, out of them. He injured about two three weeks ago, so it felt like at that point the West Coast Conference was really a wide open race. And hats off to them. Thank you. Yep.